What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon. Lexus LFA. Man, I love this car since they first announced it. I remember seeing it at the car show. I forgot what year that was. And they, um, they didn't even give it a name yet. It was still on the concept. And we still thought it would be like a Supra. But it turned out Lexus definitely uh, gave it its own its own name and charged way too much for it. And then here we are. <laughs> the Lexus LFA. But it's just something about this car. Like the design is fine, you know. It's not too much reminiscent of the Super, but it's got that sleek super car mold. And part of what made the Super special. And the uh the specs were nice, put it somewhere somewhere in, in line with some of the higher tier Ferraris. So overall, you know, Toyota did a real good job with this guy, and that was that was the mission for this. People were still wondering if Lexus still had it in them, Toyota still had it in them. It sucks that they they went 350 grand on a price tag with something like this. You know, damn near the competitors for this thing were, were cheaper by almost a good 50, 60 grand. But nonetheless, I was happy it was in Forza. So, hey, you see me, I'm, I'm just taking it for a spin. So I wanted to really transform it from uh, from what it was stock to an all-out track edition. And see how that would go. So I really had to drive it for a few, a few laps, a few races. To get a feel for it so I'm not really pushing it here um, I'm having a tough time driving this car man I don't know if it was because I've been playing grid for for a while and it came back here and it you know forces feels unfamiliar that definitely happens when you you switch uh, racing games back and forth or any games for that matter shooters especially as well but I don't know man I, I definitely wasn't feeling comfortable in this car and it really doesn't help that I'm driving a a high horsepower car like this with traction off <laughs> that probably had a lot to do with it but yeah it's, you know you rock out man you just respect the gas pedal and you, you respect your entry and, and you rock out to it I will say that this car is fun as hell to drive once you let it loose though. Like if you if you enter correctly and then power over, it can maintain the slide really well. But again, adjusting from grid, this took me a while to get back. Like look at my dumb ass damn near halfway off the track just now. So, you know, not only am I, I getting used to the car, I'm getting used to the game again. And into the wall. Very nice. But I, I did enjoy the car, man. Damn, this thing sounds beautiful. And famous for that commercial they did where they they hooked it up to some sort of audio device. Whatever the hell they did. And just was basically cracking a, a room full of glass with the sound from this thing. Yeah, this car sounds good. This is probably my favorite sounding car of all time. And even I in the game, just real life. Like, this thing sounds amazing. But anyway... So my vision, my vision for this car was a track edition would, you know, you get all the, the handling, the brakes out of the way, but the challenge really came down to what I wanted to do in terms of engine work. And I wasn't quite sure, it felt plenty fast before, so I, I, I don't know, I was on the fence of what I wanted to do. and. From bone stock, it's a naturally aspirated engine, and you know I, I could have kept that vibe, but I could have also gone turbo and just give it a real nice response. But I I fear because the car was so susceptible to to power sliding, I really wanted to. Give the power curve a nice, a, a nice. Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I, I didn't want the power just piling on when I hit the gas, so I opted out of the, the turbo and I kept it normally aspirated. And I can tell you, 
I'm really like shocked at how well it came out. The power comes on really smooth. And this thing, it's a bit more horse as you're looking at it now. It's a bit more horsepower from stock. <laughs> like 717 or some crazy thing interestingly enough the torque is only like four and change 416 maybe or 420 something but the power climbs all the way up to redline and it redlines at 10 grand so it was a high revving it was a high revving car stock but after i did the work it was it was revving up to 10 grand like i think exactly 10 grand and you rev it there all the way and you get your complete power band right through which is which is an interesting thing not a lot of cars do that uh, if you notice in the dash it'll they've got the shift the shift light you can completely ignore that the shift light was I think at like 81 82 ish but the car went full full power full power band all the way through the 10 so I was happy with that result um, that's something I wish they would fix in Forza 5. You know, these instruments should be recording the, the correct data. So, you know, nah, just a little nitpick. But, yeah, so I'm here. And I'm not going all out on it because I'm still I'm still uh, getting used to it. I actually tuned it for about half an hour. It took me to dial it in. And I'm still not comfortable. I don't, I don't, again, I don't know if it's this grid thing because I've been playing Forza, or this car is just like that much of an animal. Like if you if you take your time and you come in nice on the entry, you get out the apex well, and you you pour on the power nice and smooth, you'll be okay. But other than that, this thing punishes you. It's like it's not a forgiving car at all. Maybe I'm just not. I, I don't know. I don't know. But in terms of fun to drive, the shit's not fun to drive. God damn it! It's it can clearly handle it. It's got a shitload of power in it, but it's not that fun to drive. Um, in terms of a track car, you know, judging from the times you'll see, it is obviously it performed a lot better than stock. But, you know, for a supercar, I expected it to be a little more comfortable. Especially when you, you take into fact, tune in some of the Faris in the game. It, they, wow, they become a joy to drive. And here, it's like, I don't know. But I will tell you, this, this thing, this thing can hold a drift, like, and I didn't tune it for drift. But you come around the corner and you pour that power on Jesus Christ it just stays like wherever you point it is where it goes I'm happy about that uh, I wanted to run a race with traction on I feel that it would be tenfold a better car to drive with traction on but that would be unfair because I traditionally don't race cars with traction and I mean shit it's, it's a supercar you know shouldn't need traction or do its thing but especially since that power curve is so smooth but yeah you know I, I like I like this this project it didn't come out as I expected but it was definitely one worthwhile the car is really nice to drive uh, it's a R3 class up from the stock S class so it's definitely, it's definitely up there but I feel like some of the other R3 Class cars, like if we were to take a Ferrari or a Lambo and do the same to it, I almost feel like this car can't compete. As nice as it sounds and as beautiful as it looks, but hey, man, maybe they'll get it right next generation. But I'm out of here for now. You guys can enjoy the race, enjoy the uh, the rest of the, the replay. Hit me in the comments, like the video. Also, don't forget to check out our Q&A videos. Any questions you guys may have, anything related to gaming, just holler at us. Leave your comments on that video. We'll answer it. And it's your boy Ramon. I'm out of here, man. Peace.